Hey everybody, it's Pete. Welcome to Stock Trading Pro. We have a ton of stuff on today's sheet. We got a bunch of stocks to talk about buying today. We got FOMC announcement today. We have earnings reports that came out yesterday, earnings reports that are coming out today. And we're going to throw Bitcoin on top of that and the reversal pattern that we're seeing in Bitcoin. We have a ton of stuff to discuss today, a lot. The biggest thing I want to talk about, though, we're going to take a quick look at this because it was something that we mentioned on Monday and that is actually the price action that's unfolding right now. So it's kind of cool to uh, actually see before you look to buy stocks, how to map it out before it happens. And then when it does unfold exactly the way you thought, it's kind of cool because that's a lot less stressful way to trade. So we have a ton of stuff to talk about. So we're going to get right into it. So stick around. I'll be back in just one second. Okay, so thank you so much for joining me today. Obviously, everything we discuss here today and every day is for educational purposes. Uh, it's up to you to make that final decision, but it's up to me, my mission to help you make better decisions before you buy stocks. So we're actually going to jump right into it. We're going to talk about this picture first, and we're going to get right into looking at it. So if you remember earlier in the week, and specifically on Monday, we mapped out the type of price action that we were looking for this week. We actually were looking for that push down. We were looking for the reversal. We almost got it exactly yesterday. And I want to point out what I'm talking about. We're going to actually jump on over into um, the short term chart of the SPY. We're actually going to jump on over to the first. Let's take a look at uh, the S&P futures right now. This is where we are. We were up 61 before. So you can see we're rallying pretty hard. Uh, but this is actually what I want to point out here from yesterday let me actually get this guy off the charts we got I, i'm talking really fast today because <laughs> we have a lot to talk about uh there's two things i want to talk about number one is the patience required uh to get involved and profitably trade the current market conditions but more importantly just the absolutely textbook price action that we're seeing unfold so what i want to get across here is again i'm going to quickly pull this up you probably want to take a snapshot of this um that is actually what is known as a buy day, a sell day, leading to a sell short day. But one of the most important things, and it's 7.30 in the morning, so I want to make sure I get this out of here before it happens, uh, because it's, it's, it's really exciting when you have stuff and it unfolds. So the biggest thing we're looking for today is we're looking for an open, a push higher, and then we're actually looking to see, is this short covering or is this new buying? That's the biggest thing we want to get across which is going to lead us over into, we're going to do a little bit of a lesson today on the VIX and the ticks. We got a bunch of questions about that. So we actually have um, some fancy PowerPoints that we're going to talk about today as well. But let's talk about yesterday's trading opportunities and the market itself. I'm actually going to pull that back up. One of the biggest things to get across right now is the day trading versus swing trading aspect and how that affects your trading activity, how that affects uh, whether you're buying stocks, whether you're selling short stocks, which has been a lot of that recently as well. Um, two things. Number one, the swing trading activity, we told you we've reduced dramatically, and that's mostly because of how hard the market's taken a hit. The only sector that we've seen really that has been super obvious is the financial sector. So let's actually pull that up. And I just want to give you an idea. Of, this is what it looked like over the last two days. And here's specifically what it looked like uh, on the daily charts. So we actually had a bullish U-turn into a well-bid day into new highs. And that now has translated into CVX, Exxon Mobil, and also something I want to talk about. So make sure you put those into your list. Those are going to be stocks that I'm going to be looking to buy today. There's one other stock that if you happen to be day trading, absolutely should be in your watch list. It's not a stock that is necessarily uh, in the news every day, but when this stock trends, it is absolutely one of my favorite stocks to be buying as a day trader. I'm going to show that to you right now, and it's CPE. And the reason I want to show this to you, and the reason it's not that um, popular to be day trading, um, uh, excuse me, to be swing trading, you can see that it's really not doing anything spectacular, right? It's kind of stuck in the middle of a trading range. However, this is where we really need to make the separation between stocks for day trading versus stocks for swing trading. This is, believe it or not, more of a, a day trading stock, and we're very big on Make sure you have a watch list of stocks that you pay attention to every day, no matter what. Sometimes they're in play. Sometimes they're not in play. When this stock is in play, you get these kind of price action where it just doesn't stop. This is just this is a two day run in a forty three dollar stock. This is a ten dollar move in two days on a forty three dollar stock. 
We get questions all the time. We had somebody last week saying, oh, you're trading the stocks you're trading are too expensive and whatnot. I want to touch on that for a second. We had somebody yesterday in the community tell me that they're getting their head beat in trading Amazon and Tesla right now. I personally right now, and with the volatility and the way that the market has been a lot less than obvious, I've been actively trading stocks between $40 and $150, trading a little bit more size while the volatility is there. I'm not telling you that to tell you exactly what to trade. What I am telling you is what I'm trading right now and how I'm making money. And <clears throat> you do not need to trade $3,000 stocks in order to profitably see your account go like this every single month. If this stock is not in, I keep going. <laughs> if this stock's not in your watch list, it should be. This is a stock that when it's in play, trends beautifully. Now we're going to go to the other side of the equation and we're going to talk about earnings. I don't know if you happen to see what Microsoft did yesterday. So that's one, one of the ideas. I keep pointing to the wrong side. <laughs> one of the ideas that should be in your radar. Think about this. $10 in basically two days. $10 in two days on a $40 stock. So if you are struggling right now to find your groove, if you are struggling to believe that there's opportunity where you can actually make some real money, it's a $40 stock. Yesterday, I traded super actively in Citigroup coming off of earnings. This is two days in Citigroup, okay? There is plenty of opportunity. Put your ego in the corner and think more about how can I make money versus how can I sound smart when I'm at Starbucks? This is more important. Finding stocks that you can handle, that you can get size in. Size is relative to everybody. For some people, size might be 100 shares for Somebody else, it might be 3,000 shares of this stock. One good trade per week can make your entire week. Stop trading too much volatility if you are not profitable. Get your confidence first instead of being shaken out of these ideas. So now we're going to work over to another idea, which hopefully you took advantage of this idea from yesterday, which was earnings in IBM. We were very clear yesterday that IBM had earnings. Earnings were good. We were looking for follow through. Now, I want to tie in IBM in the morning with IBM in the afternoon. And this is how you start to put the pieces together to, and again, it doesn't matter if you're day trading or swing trading. I just want to show you uh, buying stocks at the right time. Remember, we just showed you this in the SPY. And oops, I can't type. We showed you this in the SPY in the afternoon. And essentially, there was... Nothing, 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 nothing. And I'm going to get into this in a second because this is really, really important. We're going to talk about this in a second. We're going to do a little presentation on the tick readings and how the tick readings affected activity level. And then when the tick readings gave us a different reading, <laughs> then we sized up. And that's how that played into the IBM trade in the afternoon. So this kind of works. If you're swing trading, you can do the same exact thing using the advanced decline line over a much bigger picture. But I want to show you this. So this is where you hear us all the time talk about the stock market power pyramid with the big picture, the Dow, the NASDAQ, the S&P, then the sectors and, and so on and so forth, right? When the market is obvious, when the market finally picks a direction, it is 10 times easier to have conviction in your ideas. And that's when you make those one or two trades that pay for the entire week. So here's what I want to point out. And this is, this is actually, I'm going to actually come off the screen because um, it's kind of important. I want, I want you to be able to take a uh, snapshot. So you can see over here at about 3, about 1.30 in the afternoon, maybe just prior to 2 o'clock, the SPY finally got above VWAP, finally got out of this range. And at that same moment is exactly when IBM rallied for $6. So now, what, is, what am I trying to get across? Now, this is where we're going to use... New York Stock Exchange tick indicator. And this is what we're actually going to start to talk about. And you can see over here, right at two o'clock, this window right here, right here where there were no negative tick readings. And essentially, I'm going to give you what that means right now. Okay. So, all right. So, what we're about to talk about right now is this is kind of an advanced day trading lesson. But once you understand this lesson, everything changes. It literally dictates my activity level. By understanding that when tick readings hit a certain number, it means that smart money is super active or smart money is doing nothing. <laughs> so if smart money is doing nothing. I'm doing nothing. Or maybe I'm just taking quicker profits if something's obvious. However, when the tick readings start to expand in a way that's obvious, which means that there's more stocks up ticking versus down ticking, 
you start to kind of like go underneath the hood of the market and see things more clearly than you might just see in the um, in the in the uh, indices themselves. So we're going to do a very quick lesson on reading the ticks and how that applied to the explosion in stocks yesterday afternoon and led to the higher market that we're seeing so far this morning. OK, so first thing we want to talk about, I use the New York Stock Exchange tick indicator. There's multiple ones, but I use the, the New York Stock Exchange shows uh, up ticking stocks versus down ticking. So if a thousand stocks are up ticking, 400 are down ticking, that gives us a reading of plus 600. So now this could look incredibly confusing, right? Now, I want to I want to just come back on the screen. Out of everything you're looking at on this chart right now, it could look like a giant mess, right? The only thing I want you to look at is zero. There's zero. <laughs> zero is the only thing that matters. So if we're looking at this chart right here, this blue line is zero. So if you could imagine, zero means nothing is going on at that moment. There's, there's an equal balance between stocks that are going up and stocks that are going down. So we're kind of just basically saying, okay, that's neutral. Anything below that is selling. And then we get into how much selling and what matters. Anything above zero means that there's buying and to what degree are there buying. Now, I'm going to give you the exact numbers to pay attention to. Probably one of the simplest indicators to use once you take all the noise out and you just focus on zero. If you can remember, zero means nothing's going on. And what's happening above or below that, to what degree, this new indi this indicator will become your new best friend. So let's actually work our way over into that lesson again and how it led to what happened yesterday. So it identifies market extremes intraday. So it's more of a day trading indicator. Identifies when, and here's the thing, when institutions are active. Now, let, let me just come back on the screen for a second. Do you think that's valuable? <laughs> Do you think it's valuable to have a look underneath the hood of the market to know when institutions are active or when they're doing nothing? Just let that sink in for a second. Everything I like to teach, everything I like to do, I like to keep it simple and actionable. And the only thing we're looking at is zero and how that tells us institutions are active and how that will translate into my activity level, my size, my position in the trade, and how long I plan to hold the trade. So now I'm going to give you a little bit of a heads up. If the tick readings are doing something specific, I'll know when I should be booking profits quicker. If the tick readings are doing something different, then I'll know I'm going to be adding, have more positions, more size, and hold longer. Do you think that's valuable? Understanding when you should book quicker profits versus understanding when you should hold for bigger profits? You bet your yeah, bottom dollar it is. <laughs> All right. So institutions are active, alert you to when you to decrease your activity level and when to lower your expectations. So when they're active, and when they are less active, okay? So here's the numbers to pay attention to. Remember, we talked about zero. Zero is the big one, right? Just keep an eye on zero. And when you look at this, it can look very confusing, but all we're concerned with is this, okay? Zero, where are we trading from zero? That's the only thing that matters right now, okay? For this particular conversation. Excessive pessimism and enthusiasm are usually seen at market tops and bottoms. And we're talking about day trading right now. So again, we're, we're comparing everything to zero. Plus 1,000 is considered exhaustion buying. Now, I, I don't usually use the word overbought, but negative 1,000 as well. So we're going to start out talking about um, ex, uh, on the plus 1,000 first. So Generally speaking, if you could imagine a car when that engine gets revved really, really high, it's just got it usually slows down right after that. So that means two things. When the tick rings go from zero or stay above zero for an extended period of time, that means that there's no stocks down ticking in mass. There's, there's a shorter, much smaller, if no stock ticking, down ticking. And when you start to see plus 1,000, plus 1,000, plus 1,000, that means that the market engine is revving. And those are the opportunities for you to hold on to your winners longer. Now, here's the thing. When you get a plus 1,000 reading, that's not a time to buy. If we're saying that's when the market's overheated and a short-term time where you expect it to pause, that's where you're going to expect the next pause looking for the next push. Now, my God, that's a lot, right? No, you just draw another line. We have zero and we have 1,000. So again, you want to take a snapshot of this stuff that's on the screen. So I'll, I'll let you take a snapshot of, uh, right there if you want, okay? So we showed you the zero line, and now here's plus 1,000, and here's negative 1,000, 
Okay, so this is yesterday. What I want to focus on is right here. So you can see we were pushing down to negative 1,000, pushing down to negative 1,000. And then all of a sudden, between 1 o'clock and 2.30, there were hardly any negative tick readings yesterday. And that, my friends, coincided with this, breaking out of this to the upside. So do you see how powerful this is? There's no reason to guess what's going to happen in the market when you have structure. So we were watching the tick readings. We were watching them float around zero, pushing down a little bit. But then all of a sudden, there were very few negative tick readings. So if you know zero is nothing's going on, and all of a sudden you see nothing is happening below zero, and you start to go plus 1,000, plus 1,000, and the, and the spy is doing nothing like this, you need to sit up in your seat because what's happening at that moment now is less stocks are being sold, more stocks are starting to be bought, and then you saw the rally in – the SPY in this case. And that is the same exact time when this pullback happened in IBM in the afternoon, again, right around 1.30, 2 o'clock, prior to the $6 rally, prior to this rally, prior to this rally, prior to this rally. Okay, again, two-hour pause just prior to that happening. Let's keep going, all right? So how do you use it if it's not happening? Okay, that's what we expect follow through. All right. If the tick does not read higher than plus 500 or minus 500, there is no institutional order flow. You should not be too active, not expect follow through, and you should look to test trade. This is basically means that you're looking for shorter term trades. Okay. Now, here's the key do not monitor all fluctuations in the tick, only be aware of zero plus or minus 500 plus or minus 1,000. That's it. Take a snapshot of this. I really want you to learn from this because this is critical to understanding your day trading activity. Now, if we take this a step further, which we're going to do right now, now we're going to stack the order flow. We're going to stack the ideas right now. I'm giving you all this because we're expecting a very volatile day in the market today, especially with the FOMC this afternoon, Microsoft earnings this morning. JKS is up big this morning. It's up 14%. We'll take a look at that stock in a second. Bitcoin is bottoming today. I want you to be fully prepared, especially if you're day trading today. Obviously, we're talking about some swing trades, but fully prepared. When the market volatility expands like this, you need to be stacking the order flow so you hit with absolute conviction or you step back and do nothing because you see the ticks are plus 500, minus 500, plus 500, minus 500, and nothing is going on. So you're either in cash having coffee, or just taking quicker profits. So now we're going to add the VIX reading into this equation and how the VIX affects your share size. Okay, the VIX comes to the volatility index. Sometimes it can be a little uh, confusing on how to use it. We're going to talk about two different ways of making sure you use it. Identifying what the trend means. And number two, how an increase in volatility in the VIX will decrease your position size to risk the same dollar amount. So I'm gonna actually walk you over through that right now, okay? So increased VIX readings translated to increased expectation for volatility. And just to give you some context, just so everybody understands what we're talking about right now, we're gonna pull the VIX up on a daily chart. And this is what the VIX has done over the last week and a half. So as the VIX has exploded, so have stocks gone to the downside, okay? So we're gonna keep on going here. As the VIX rises, you should plan to reduce your share size to compensate for wider price action. So what does that mean? All right. Determines the market's expectation of volatility over the next 30 day period. So the rising VIX is anticipating more volatility. And that's exactly what we saw happen in the market. Right. So as the VIX exploded to the upside, the market exploded to the downside. So they're working in tandem. All right. Moving on. The higher the VIX, the more volatility, which means price movement. We're going to get into how that affects your trading in just a second. Uh, a higher trending VIX, so the, the VIX is going up, which is what we saw in the market over the last 10 days, indicates a bearish and volatile environment. A lower trending VIX means that VIX is going down, milder price movement, and generally bullish price actions. Now, how does that translate into what, you should, hap what should happen in the trade? So as the VIX rises means more volatile. So here's the visual I want to give you of that because it's it's absolutely critical. And I'm going to use, it doesn't matter if you're day trading or swing trading, I'm going to use a five-minute chart to, to illustrate what I mean by this. 
and how risking the same dollar amount gets compensated for the increased volatility simply by adjusting your position size. Okay, so what I'm going to show you is a five minute chart of the SPY and explain what we mean here. So about a week and a half ago, maybe two weeks ago, you can see here these are moving in one dollar increments on a five minute chart. About a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, the same five minute chart, these increments were 10 or 25 cents. So what does that mean? What does that mean? It doesn't matter if we're day trading or swing trading. This, this lesson uh, fits both criteria. It means that as volatility expands on those normal candlesticks we're watching, again, it doesn't matter if it's a five minute chart or a daily chart, volatility for what we normally risk on that candle has dramatically expanded. So now we're going to tie the VIX back to the ticks, back to how we trade. This is trading at the highest levels, everybody. Um, and by the way, if you could do me a favor, uh, if you're getting value out of this stuff, please do me a favor, smash that like button and make sure you hit subscribe. We've got new education videos coming out soon. So we're going to tie this back now into how this affects trading. So again, I just want to make sure I, uh, I illustrate what we're talking about. As the VIX explodes, volatility expands which means the difference between your entry and your exit is going to expand. So now we're going to talk about how I adjust my position size based on the VIX expanding and risk the same dollar amount. That's the part that a lot of people get confused. I'm not risking more. How I'm allocating shares to the market is what changes. Okay. And I hope you really learned this lesson because it's a big one. All right. So if your trading plan is to risk $300 per trade, and again, that's just an example for illustrative purposes. Some people risk 30, some people risk 300, some people risk 3,000. I just want to be clear about that, okay? Uh, based on your money management criteria, you should plan to risk that amount with a wider stop loss. So it's the same dollar amount with a wider stop loss because the VIX is going up, okay? That's critical, all right? For example, a $300 risk with a normal 50 cent stop loss, just to give it a, a simple example, um, target would mean 600 shares. So $300 divided by 50 cents equals $600. Now, what I'm about to show you is the part that completely changes trading for a lot of people because you think that if you're trading a $200 stock versus a $30 stock, the $200 stock will have more volatility for you. No, <laughs> not if you risk properly. If I risk $300 on a stop loss, I say three, $300 on a stop loss on a $200 trade, or I risk that same $300 on a $30 stock, I'm not risking more $200 stock versus $30 stock. What I'm doing is risking the same $300, but adjusting my position size for a wider or a smaller stop loss based on what I just taught you in the VIX. This changes everything. This changes everything because you're like, oh my gosh, those stocks are so volatile. They're only volatile if you're not adjusting how you're stepping on the gas. All you need to do is pay attention to is the VIX up and tying that back to the tick reading, how volatile and how active are institutions right now. So we're going to take a look and see how this affects your position size in those trades. Okay. All right. So for example, we just said $300 risk for 50 cents is 600 shares. And by the way, that's the simple math equation. Take a quick snapshot of that, okay? $300 risk divided by 50 cent stop loss is 600 shares. As the VIX rises, and again, let's just make sure we understand what that means. That's what the VIX has done over the last, look at that, over the last week and a half, okay? As the VIX rises, the distance to your normal stop loss will increase. Therefore, to risk the same $300, the appropriate stop loss target may now be 75 cents away or a dollar away. So just keep an eye on these 600 shares versus 400 shares. So the same $300 as the VIX is rising, you're adjusting your share size. So $300 divided by now a 75 cent stop loss equals 400 shares. So do you see what you're doing? You're still risking $300, but your share size is different because your stop loss is different. That's stuff that could take an entire lifetime to learn. I really hope you go back and watch this video again, pause it, take notes, and take screenshots. 
Because when you understand that and you understand adjusting your share size to increased volatility, but you're not changing the risk, the dollar amount per trade, it's a lot easier to be less stressed out on your trades because you're not technically risking more money. You're just changing and adjusting how you're risking that money based on share size. So the VIX will give you clues to volatility, and that's going to tell you that your stop loss is going to expand or contract. And the tick readings, I'm going to go back to that so you can take a snapshot of it again. The tick readings, and this is the page you want to take a snapshot of, the tick readings will tell you how to hold for bigger trades or when not to expect follow through and book quicker profits. So do you see how we're combining the market, the volatility, the institutional activity? All of that is completely putting the pieces together for us to say, all right, I know exactly what I'm going to do. It's a question of share size and how long I plan to hold it. All of that is before we even put the trade on. Raise your hand if you've ever shaken out of a good trade. Raise your hand if you said, I had that great trade. I got out too early. Raise your hand if you said, I had too many share size and I don't, it just wasn't working. What I just taught you is high level stuff. This is the stuff that separates you from somebody who can't make a dime to getting to the other side where trading is a lot less stressful because you know what you're doing before it happens. And we're not even tying into the equation this part of what we talked about today, which is how we planned out exactly what we were looking at in the market. So again, if you remember, if you were with us on Monday, we were looking at a buy day, which is what we got. We were looking for yesterday to make higher highs and higher lows. And then today, heading into the FOMC meeting, we're looking for a higher opening, and then we're probably going to see some profit taking. At least that's what we're looking for. So you can see we mapped this out. So if you go to the price action that we mapped out on Monday, as of right now, it's unfolding pretty cleanly. We didn't get the higher low yesterday, but we're getting the higher low this morning. So we're getting the higher opening, which you can see right here. We're getting the higher opening, the open and the push higher. And now to really bring it home, we would start to look for a certain percentage of the average true range to determine where today is going to ultimately find some sellers or profit taking on this rally back to the upside. So I just can't wait to get it. I, I, I can't wait sometimes to wake up in the morning to talk about this because I always try and pretend that we're, you and I together are on my trading floor in New York City and I'm mentally prepping you for the market conditions that are about to happen. But what's kind of cool is that we did this on Monday before the market opened. And as of right now, we're seeing it kind of play out uh, in a pretty clean fashion. So when you combine the price action you expect from one day to the next with the bigger picture of order flow, then you drill down into the market internals like I just showed you. And then you start to say which sectors are on fire right now to take advantage of what I'm looking at. This is where trading becomes kind of fun because it's no longer on the market to give you money. You ultimately become the asset. You become the reason you're making money, not because you have to be the smartest person in the room. You know why? Because you're prepared. <laughs> you have everything scripted out before the market even opens. That's where trading becomes the reason you can take a step back, feel great and say, I don't care if my boss gives me a raise. I know exactly what I'm doing and I can take, I expect to make money. Doesn't mean you'll make money on every trade. I talked about on Tuesday how I lost money on a couple of trades before they ended up unfolding, but that's okay. As long as you keep your risk manageable, as long as you keep your risk to what it's supposed to be, it's those one or two trades like we showed you in IBM yesterday afternoon that follow through in a big way where earnings came out, we got some follow through and you get these kind of moves. This is just one move in the afternoon that perfectly coincided with the market and perfectly coincided with the tick reading where we started to see hardly any selling and we started to see all these big readings to the upside. It was a perfect storm of opportunity yesterday afternoon. Now, again, this is the day, I'm giving you the day trading example. We do the same exact thing on a little bit bigger picture um, on the swing trading side. But look, I'm gonna be honest with you. I have reduced my swing trading dramatically over the last two weeks. And look, that should just be kind of obvious. No, I mean, if this is what we're experiencing right now over the last two weeks, it just stands to reason that I'd want to not be as aggressively long. The only things that have been taking off a little bit are these. Um, however, I am now expecting this. 
Before we end up finishing up today, I want to talk about Bitcoin and I want to talk about a couple of other stocks that are in my game plan for today. Because, I look, obviously, I appreciate all the time that you're giving me here today. Um, so obviously, we've been talking about the financials. We're talking about the FOMC announcement. If interest rates get raised, which they're absolutely going to, they've already said they're going to, bank stocks, financial stocks, and the increase in the interest rate should be the beneficiary of that. And we're starting to see Citigroup, Morgan Stanley specifically as the two that I'm trading. We also had American Express yesterday. So just point those out. Citigroup with a little bit better picture. Morgan Stanley, not really yet. It's still kind of stuck in the middle. Here's the all-time highs up here. American Express will also be in my watch list today. Um, Mimi, it's definitely in there. There's not a question it's in there uh, in Thinkorswim. Uh, just what I would do is just look up their symbol list, and it's definitely in there. Um, so, again, just to be clear, what I normally use, there's one for the S&P. Uh, there's a tick reading for the S&P. There's a tick reading for the NASDAQ. And there's a tick reading for the New York Stock Exchange. I typically use the New York Stock Exchange because it's a bigger list of stocks. The S&P 500 is 500 stocks. There's nothing wrong with using that. Um, Mimi, just look, go to your um, trade station uh, or think or swim help desk, uh, and they'll, they'll give you what the exact symbol for that is. Okay. Uh, so American Express is another one that we're looking at this morning. Oh, there you go. Thank you, John. Really appreciate it. So it's a dollar sign tick. Thank you, John. All right. Excellent, guys. Really appreciate that. Um, thank you. So American Express will be on my list today. Now, JKS and the solar stocks were all in a uh, bearish environment, right? They all hit this level where they look like they were all ready to break down right there, right? Found support, found support, found support and broke down. They're actually up 14% this morning. So I want to put this into context. This group of stocks is finding buying today. JKS, RUN, ENPH, they all have longer term bearish order flow. So let's tie that back to what we just talked about with what is the proper activity and profit target for stocks that are bearish order flow long term, but bullish order flow today. These would be more momentum trades for me. And in, in the way that we talk about that in our community, instead of trading the longer term profit maximizer, I'd be using the momentum profit maximizer to take advantage of today's short term activity in, in these stocks specifically. So I'll give you an example right now. So JKS, ENPH, you can see this is up three and a half percent, obviously long term bearish order flow. This is only taking advantage of the group today and run. But I think we're trading all of them mostly off of AKS right now being up 14 percent. All right. Also getting into the picture today. Again, these stocks have longer term bearish order flow. But you can see uh, plug is seeing a little bit of buying today. DKNG seeing a little bit of buying today. Now, again, I want to make this ridiculously clear so we're not taking things out of context. All I'm not saying to bottom fish these stocks. I want to be super clear about that. What I am pointing out is the differences. If we look at IBM or CVX or XOM, those energy stocks that have bullish order flow, we can buy those with conviction and expect follow through. Doesn't mean we always get it, but it's the higher probability trade. These stocks that are in bearish order flow going down, but up today, Maybe I'll day trade them just off of today's price activity, but I'm not looking to put on a longer term trade until we see more proof in one day, two days, three days worth of buying where the smart money steps up. Then I'll look to put on some bigger trades in those directions. The other big thing I want to talk about today is this guy right here. This is probably one of the uh, most interesting uh, ideas on the planet right now. So obviously everybody's looking at the 34 now. Here's what I want to talk about with building arguments for a trade, right? This is one of our favorite signals. We actually have three different signals right here in just this little piece. So this is what's kind of fun. And I'm actually going to continue to make this big if you want to take a snapshot of that. Um, Bitcoin, we had big move to the downside. You can see the longer term trend. But if you remember yesterday, we talked about recognizing momentum reversal patterns. And one of the big ones that we talked about was a bullish U-turn. So a bullish U-turn is not a big picture reversal. It's a short-term reversal that could lead to a big picture reversal. So now I want to give you a uh, kind of an advanced thing, right? So if we see it happening for one day, okay, that's interesting, right? But if we see that same pattern happen over five days on the weekly chart, now we sit up in our seat and we say, okay, that story changed a little bit. So if we see it one day, and then we see another pattern and then we see another pattern. We're like, wow, now we're stacking the odds or stacking the argument to saying this thing might be reversing. So I want to I'm going to make this big screen. You can take a snapshot of this right now. 
So what we're talking about here in Bitcoin in the context of this much bigger move to the downside, this candle right here is a bullish U-turn. So what that means is that it pushed below this candle, reversed back up, closed above that previous low, and closed above the open. It needs to meet all of those criteria. So for a bullish U-turn need to be a bullish U-turn, it has to close green. You might see something that looks like that that closes red. That would just be considered a bottoming tail. We want to see it close above where it opened. Then we move forward, and there's another pattern followed by another pattern, which is indicating a short-term bottom. So what I want to be clear is if this unfolds and we see what the last pattern is now, which is well bid, which we talk about here every day, then I'm going to go over and look for some day trades or short-term trades in Mara or Riot. So we're going to move over to Bitcoin mining stocks if this follows through. So we had a bullish U-turn. That's our first short-term reversal. Then we had this, which is a pause. So if you remember, everything that we talk about, we talk about a push and a pause, a push and a pause. Lately, we've had a lot of push down and a pause, right? So in this case here, we had a reversal, which was buying over a 24-hour period. Then it paused. We traded into that previous candle and paused. So now we're sitting back saying, okay, what's the next move going to be? We talk about in the community, when it tips its hand, then I'm going to jump on board. So now we're seeing bullish U-turn into a pause into now today early, but we're following through with what we call well-bid candlesticks, which means they're paying higher prices, holding higher lows. So now we have bullish U-turn into an inside day, into a well-bid candle. And now we're stacking the argument that this is very potentially a short-term reversal in Bitcoin, which will now translate into other ideas. So I'm going to give you that. You can take a snapshot of what I was just talking about there. So you have a bullish U-turn into a pause into well bid. So you can see higher lows, higher highs. So if that follows through, then I'm going to take a look at, now again, this is a much longer term move to the downside, but you can see it's up almost 5% already. So again, being super clear, I'm not saying they're bottoming. I'm saying we are seeing short-term momentum reversal. Now here's what, again, this is what's kind of cool. We're going to now go over to next week. We're going to go all the way into next week or by the end of this week for what we want to see. And this is how you start to stack the argument to increase your conviction level on everything you do. Okay. So now we're going to go over to Bitcoin again. And what I just showed you is, uh, excuse me, let me pull that up, pulled up the wrong one right there. This is a daily chart, right? This is a daily chart. That's one day of trading. What we're looking for now. And again, this is, this is, I want to elevate what you're thinking. It's eight o'clock in the morning, seven 30 here with me. We're going to go for it. We're going to elevate as much as you could possibly think. You want to now say, what do I want to see? What don't I want to see? And if I see what I'm looking for, I'm going to get in there with conviction. So we just looked at Bitcoin one day followed by the next two days of patterns. It's looking good. So now what do we want to see bigger picture over longer periods of time? So now why is that significant? Today is one day of buying. But what if we see the same thing over five days? That means more. That means somebody with real money spent five days buying that to make that happen. So what we're going to look now is this same pattern here is what we want to see here. And look at that. We're actually seeing it. So we want to see Bitcoin finish as a bullish U-turn. So look at on the weekly chart, we traded down, reversed. We're above last week's low. And as of right now, we're above the open. So Think about what we're doing. Are we predicting? Hell no. We're just saying over five days, somebody with deep pockets bought it after it went down, brought it back up, held it above Monday's close, and finished the week strong. That's what we're looking for. Now, I'm going to actually tie this back to putting the pieces together that we did on Monday in the market. So if you can remember this picture, what we talked about on Monday, and we gave you this visualization is that we said, if you can think about on the daily chart of the market right there, that's what we were looking for on Monday and Tuesday this week. And then we're looking for this, unfortunately, but that's what we're looking for. So at the very least, we're looking for that. So what we're putting into the equation right now is this. We've mapped it out before it even happened on Monday. So if you could visualize this, as these two days, now we didn't quite make the second high. We're actually making that right now. So what we're looking for is a higher opening, a push higher, and then right at that moment, 
Here's the big thing. As of right now, we are seeing a short covering rally. Short covering happens after a big, vicious move to the downside. If you short sell the stock, you have to buy it back to get out of it. It's faster because people are exiting because it's not going down anymore. So what clues are we looking for Wednesday, Thursday, especially? FOMC announcement today and Thursday. What am I looking for? What is our boot camp community looking for? We are now looking for push up, best case scenario, sideways after the FOMC. So as of right now, it's short covering, people getting out of short, which means that we're in a bearish environment. If we go up after the announcement and come straight back down, the bears are still in control. If we go up, go sideways, the bears are going to be shaking because now they're short. Those who are still short uh, are now like, no, go down, go down. And all of a sudden now somebody with a lot of money is holding it up there. And the longer we go sideways, the better chance we're going to rally. So now, again, think about it. We're mapping out what we expect to happen over the next two days before it happens. And this is where you elevate your thinking. If it unfolds perfectly, you're going to have a game plan for both sides. If it goes up and sharply comes back down, maybe you take your stop loss or your quick profit. If it goes up and goes sideways, now you're like, oh, this is interesting. Somebody's holding that bid. And now we're going to look for strong stocks to buy, which we just said energy stocks and financial stocks have been leading the way. So it's kind of cool. This is this is really where you start to put those pieces of the market together. I'm going to put this back on the screen for you one more time. This is where you start to put the pieces of the market together, where you go into the day saying, I'm looking for this kind of day. And that's where, uh, look, I'll just say it. That's where trading becomes fun because you're no longer guessing. This is what I do every day. This is what I teach people every day. And I'm just kind of giving you a little glimpse of this right now because trading is a lot less complicated than you're probably making it right now. Uh, I'm not saying it's easy to make money. There's a difference between chart reading and trading. The, the, the making money part of it is where we need to be involved while the market's open every day and, and talking about it. But what I'm giving you are the clues, the, the structure for how to know exactly what you're looking for. And here's the big thing. that you, This is a writer downer, okay? If you know what you're looking for, you're not lost anymore, right? However... If you look at everything and you're like, I don't, I, can't, I don't see anything, stop trading. <laughs> There's no other way to put it. The market is not a horse race. It's not ding, 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 ding. I have to place a trade. It's Monday. Ding, 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 ding. It's 9.30 in the morning. I have to place a trade. If you know what you're looking for, you're not lost anymore. I'm giving you the price action structure to at least understand that you know what to look for. If it's there, great. You already scripted out. If this happens, then I plan to do this. The part that most smart people miss is they map out, if this happens, then I plan to do this. They miss this part because if this happens, but this does not happen and they still trade anyway, that is where you lose and throw money away that you don't have to. Keep that in your pocket if you understand exactly what you're looking for. All right. I have to get out of here. I have to head over to our next meeting. Um, tomorrow, we're actually going to do a little bit more training. Um, on uh, stacking the order flow. So make sure you join us tomorrow. Uh, I want to thank you so much for being here with me today. I really appreciate it. If you found some value out of this, please do me a favor, smash that like button, make sure you hit subscribe, uh, and I'll see you tomorrow morning. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you.